It's the one place in Las Vegas where fanciful flights of butterflies have now taken wing in reality. Wickedness reigns in the name of botanical education. Wildlife plays a humorous role in our new game show. And there are many more stories at the Springs Preserve where all that matters is what's elemental. Butterflies may seem like the most delicate creatures, and yet they're enduring ideal symbols of all things bright, beautiful, and free-spirited in the natural world. And now the opening of our new butterfly habitat brings to life in one place everything the Springs Preserve represents. To develop an appreciation for the place in which we live, whether it's the flora, the fauna, the climate, and the other people that we live with, that all happens here on the Springs Preserve. And so it's, it's exciting to open this venue and have another way to tell our story. Which is one of boundless imagination combined with incessant labor to create an unparalleled natural experience for our visitors like so many other parts of the gardens that now we look at and say this is gorgeous a lot of work went in on the front end to enjoy the celebration today with the final product and it's just the beginning but what's made it such a successful launch with a promising future has been several years and many miles of travel in the making the concept and everything for the butterfly habitat we've been doing uh, planning and research and everything for over three years now we had staff that uh, that went to different uh, butterfly habitats and gardens across the United States and and yeah we were trying to look for that perfect fit so we were looking at all those exhibits and seeing what worked what didn't work um, staffing levels that sort of thing and tried to put it all together because we were trying to think of the animals we we're trying to think of visitor flow and the guest experience Experience, landscaping inside the habitat. All of that translates into an indoor-outdoor garden and gallery which combines what's lovely and functional into the best possible setting for the butterflies. We had to think about plants that would fit together with similar water requirements and that you know would work with the palette that we had and create something that would be interesting. Think about the seasons and we wanted to make sure we had lots of interesting fall color in there. And they've raised their game to new heights that are more attractive to the butterflies and will elevate the senses of our guests. The other thing we really tried to do was you know, get some more vertical elements in there too. So we've, the trellising that we've done is nice so that we can get you know, the flowers, the plants up more vertically where people can view them too. Everywhere people look, they'll find the kind of enlightening information they expect from the preserve. We've got interpretation throughout the exhibit. So if you want to learn, you know, you'll learn all sorts of things about butterflies. So you're going to learn about their, their natural history. You're going to learn about their life cycle. You're going to learn about how they feed, reproduction, all of those things. But also built into the butterfly habitat are the kinds of lessons that are intensely personal and even eternal. Butterflies are so peaceful and quiet and to enter the exhibit and stand still to wait for them to land on you is just sort of one of those moments in this crazy life that we all lead that is just beautiful. Especially when the habitat will always be a flutter with hundreds and hundreds of butterflies at any given time and at frequent intervals we'll be varying the species to make it a continually renewing experience. Our collection plan throughout the season is to change it up, showcase different butterfly species. So you might come in one visit and there might be you know, three or four of one species and just check back because we'll be making posts on Facebook and Twitter to let everybody know, hey, we're bringing this, uh, this type of species. So maybe we'll be bringing monarchs in a couple weeks or blue morphos. There's no better reason to keep up with social media than staying up to date on the brief appearances of special butterflies and the seasonality of their habitat. The exhibit's seasonal for a reason, so it's a, a spring and a fall exhibit. It's because of just temperature extremes here in Mojave. It's too hot during the summertime for them. In the wintertime, it just gets too cold, especially in the evening. So luckily here in Las Vegas, we've got perfect temperatures in the spring and fall. So those are the ideal times when people want to be outside on our trails or our gardens and now in our butterfly habitat. And even when the living butterflies are on hiatus, their artful likenesses will be putting on a more permanent display throughout our gardens.
In developing the uh, butterfly habitat, um, we decided that it would be a great idea to create some gardens art around the, the habitat to draw attention to it, to kind of tie the gardens in uh, with the, the butterfly habitat itself. And so we contacted a local sculptor named Miguel Rodriguez, uh, who designed these metal butterfly sculptures. Uh, each of them are, are the same. Um, and uh, then he kind of recruited local artists to paint each of the butterfly uh, sculptures in their own style. So they're all kind of the same metal sculptures, but then they're made unique by each of the local artists. But what all the artists, gardeners, and naturalists share is an appreciation of the lovely and lively ideals that define the preserve. It's uh, been really fascinating to see a uh, kind of representation of the art community here in Las Vegas, which is really alive and well and thriving and really does care about the Springs Preserve and wants to be involved in the Springs Preserve as well. It's simply reflective of the Springs Preserve. It's some place to go, be it walking around the preserve or going in the butterfly exhibit. You go to another place. You're not in Las Vegas anymore. It's like, wow, this is what nature is. This is, this is part of the mission of the Springs Preserve, to bring that quality into someone's life. We are beautiful. We can be fragile. But we're constantly renewing, and when we do come out and open our wings, we are gorgeous. You can help keep Christmas trees out of the local landfill by recycling yours after the holiday. Take any live tree to one of the more than 30 valley locations, including the Springs Preserve, from December 26th through January 15th. And just across the south parking lot at the preserve, we also make it easy for you to drop off your used holiday cooking oil and grease to keep it from becoming a sewer-clogging pain in the drain for our community. To find out more, log on to springspreserve.org or call 702 822-7700. The plants at the preserve are usually a popular attraction because of their beauty, except during the witching season in an exhibit where they're fascinating for their wickedness. The exhibit is based on Amy Stewart's book, Wicked Plants, the weed that killed Lincoln's mother and other botanical atrocities. When we first heard about the Wicked Plants exhibit, we thought it was truly a killer concept that we were dying to try. There aren't that many exhibits about plants out there. And so when this one was available, um, I uh, headed out to Asheville, North Carolina, to the North Carolina Arboretum. And they are the ones that developed the exhibit, saw the exhibit at its initial inst installation. And at that point, uh, we moved forward with reserving it to, to have it here at the Springs Preserve. And we are the third venue uh, nationally to have this. The book and the exhibit showcase a variety of plants that could be fatal to human beings, as well as ones that affect our health in one way or another, positively less often. But, and, but more often negatively. In a whole caseload of grim but educational acts of herbicide where the plants are actually in on the crime. Lincoln's mother passed away from something called milk sickness. Cows that ate a plant called white snake root could take the toxins in their body. They could survive, but then pass it on to humans through their milk, which then could cause uh, a, a fatality. And that's just one of the horror stories that have been ripped from the pages of the book and staged in the New Frontier Gallery to tantalize our guests. One of the rooms focuses on those plants which affect our human physiology. And sometimes people do that on purpose. That might be um, nicotine or some illegal drugs. Other rooms um, have some crime scenes. For example, um, there is a dinner table set out, a, a dining room party, and uh, someone passed away from consuming something. And so you have to identify the clues to try and determine what it was on the menu that in fact caused death of one of the guests. And all of the plants are arranged in a setting that is appropriately spooky. It's very macabre. As we have been setting up the exhibit, one of the staff members popped their head in and, and said, oh, it looks a little bit like Disney's Haunted Mansion. And it does look a little bit like that, but without the happiness. Although Wicked Plants does fit in perfectly with our diabolical plan to fill the long, dark winter nights ahead with shrieks of glee and discovery. 
Chocolate throughout the ages has been a phenomenon of religious, economic, social, and culinary importance, and a whole exhibit that's dedicated to revealing the sweet and addictive history behind this very human craving will be on display in the Origin Museum from February 8th through June 1st. For more information, visit springspreserve.org. There are many serious life lessons to be learned from observing and understanding the animals of the Mojave Desert. But in our new game show at the Big Springs Theater, we're giving guests the chance to get to know many unique creatures in the craziest and most hilarious ways possible. And the name of the show is You Bet Your Wildlife. It's kind of a little play on words from classic game shows. And the idea is we've had so many shows at the Springs Preserve that were you know, non-fiction, informative, great shows, you know, where people got to see wildlife up close, but nothing that was really wacky, nothing zany. And this is really wacky and zany. The idea of the show is the, the, the audience is divided into three sections. We have a representative come down from each section and they play games, crazy games, to test their knowledge of the Mojave Desert and the wildlife that lives in it. And we maximize the participation factor by casting audience members in every imaginable role. Before the show starts, I'll go out and I'll recruit an art critic, a couple of contestants, and a show announcer to come down and announce the, the, the opening of the show. And it's a chance for the guests of the Springs to come down and have fun with it as well. While the goal is to collect points for the team, the real result is to get the whole crowd as engaged as we can in answering the questions and encouraging the contestants. There's been a lot of game shows in the past where, you know, um, audience members come down and they play collecting points for the teams and the, the, the crowd is very interactive. The crowd roots, the crowd, you know, cheers makes noise, helps them out with answers and things. Um, think of it like uh, trying to guess the price for the price is right, you know. The, the crowd has as much fun screaming and yelling and getting into it as the person on stage does. Although some knowledge is helpful, creativity and imagination also come into play as people learn what they don't yet know about desert wildlife. We have an art round. We have a round where the, 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 the contestants are given a, a name of a Mojave desert animal and they're asked to draw it. We have another guest, usually someone little, that comes down and is the art critic and judges who best captures the spirit of that Mojave Desert animal. And it's easy and fun when it's something like a sidewind or a desert cottontail. But when the guests have to, you know, when the contestants have to draw a Faina Pepla or a Sulpugid or a Moapa Dace, then it becomes a little bit more, a little bit more, more wacky, a little bit more wild. Even if you think you've figured the game out, we're always adding in some new variations. We have formats that are set up, but different shows, so if people come down and they see one show one week and then come the following week, it's a completely different answers and a completely different show. And we don't see any end to our game show ideas when there are just as many animals as there are entertaining ways to learn about them. Here at the Springs Preserve, we want to educate people about their environment, about the Mojave Desert. It's kind of a fun way to, you know, do a new little spin on what, you know, the approach to learning about the Mojave Desert and learning about your environment. All aboard for the North Pole as Santa Claus appears for the two days before Christmas as the conductor of all the holiday jollity on our festive train ride around the preserve's magical exploration trail. Visit springspreserve.org for more information. As the old year passes away, thoughts turn to the loved and lost who are remembered in the traditional Mexican celebration of souls that's depicted through a series of vibrant photographic images on display in our Big Springs Gallery. The exhibit includes 26 photographs um, which feature different aspects of Day of the Dead uh, festivities in southern Mexico, specifically the Oaxaca region. There's also um, a bunch of interpretive panels in both English and Spanish that talk about, you know, the history of Day of the Dead celebrations and the significance of it. Every visitor will recognize memorial rituals that are typical of the region and people, yet universal to all humans. Decorating of altars, cooking, um, making pan de muerto, which is a special um, bread they use on the altars, decorating burial plots, uh, processions with flowers, there's chocolate skulls, they make candy skulls, different things to adorn the altars, candles, a lot of cooking and family community gatherings, very colorful. And what soul wouldn't want to come home when it's being enshrined by an altar of such heavenly color and creativity? 
We also have a local artist who actually had an altar here at the Day of the Dead festivities um, last year. Her name is Martha Rosas and she'll be building an altar to complement the exhibit. And complete this comforting display of symbols and ceremonies for all souls, living or everlasting. Everyone's gone through losing a loved one and it's obviously a somber and life-changing event, but um, this whole notion of like celebrating the living memories that they had is really a great thing that can be appreciated by everyone. With the recent relocation of the Nature Exchange to a space alongside our newly improved gift shop, we've put plans in place that are already proving to be a change that's all for the best. One of the big pluses for us moving into our new location here, the Nature Exchange, is we see a lot more foot traffic with the gift shop. So we are the, the largest nature exchange in the country, um, and every day we see new people. And I think what has been another big benefit for us here is we've seen a lot of people from out of state and actually out of the country as well. So they've started new programs. They take our literature back home with them. So on their next visit, they'll bring things in and go ahead and trade with us. The additional inventory and wider variety of surprising items will appeal to our target market of traders, young and older. One of the other benefits for the kids, we're a lot more uh, kid friendly now. The shelves are lower here than they were in the other location. So that helps kids, you know, parents don't have to pick them up or they don't have to try and climb onto a stool to go ahead and look at things. Here it's, you know, right at eye level. So it's, it's a lot easier for kids to go ahead and look through all the different uh, items that we have with the pine cones, seashells, rocks, minerals, fossils. Makes it a lot easier for the kids. One of the things that's nice here is you do see a lot of adult uh, traders as well. Um, I think one of the, the better aspects of it is they have had a liking since they were a child to something and they're passing that down to their kids or their grandkids. We do see a lot of uh, uh, seniors bringing their grandkids here into the park, which is nice. Because in some cases, the families that trade together also travel together. They're gearing a lot of their family vacations around places that they can go hiking to find things in. So yeah, we do see that quite a bit here, yeah. And then, who knows what treasures they'll discover to equal or earn them some of the prizes in the Nature Exchange collection. We do have our large clam that's over there, that's two million points. So we have um, quite a few people that have been trying to save uh, two million points to go ahead and get that. But a lot of times you'll see with the kids that the temptation is just too much. They want, they see something else and they just go for it. So then they have to build their points back up. But uh, the clam shell, you know, our, our amethysts do very well. And uh, a lot of the conch shells too, they, they're worth several thousand points. So we have people that uh, save their points up for those. The quality and variety of the stock in the gift shop is also expanding to offer items that are both exclusive and popular sellers. A good, good gift store has a, a variety and a price range for everyone, including some very expensive things and some very, very inexpensive. And we've done that right down from one cent up to $500. And um, so we're giving people choices now. In keeping with the mission of the preserve, we're doing it ethically even as we provide rare and exotic product lines. We're doing a lot of fair trade right now and looking at items that fit the mission statement for the, the shop here. Fair trade is an organization that's worldwide, uh, that's sustainable products used and made by people who have no work. And they are using their local ingredients and it's providing funds for them worldwide to keep them healthy and, and productive. But we're also seeking out authors and artists, crafters and cooks that come from closer to home and will benefit our own community of Springs members. We're looking at uh, items like our own jams, our own jellies, our own spreads, our own gourmet foods, all on our own label. And we'll be showing them and we'll have tastings on a regular basis. We will have more demonstrations and participation from shoppers and particularly on weekends and major events we will have here in the in the uh, gift store all kinds of products that are related but also new ideas we are in the process right now of putting together the first cookbook for the Springs Reserve and I've written several cookbooks so we're going to do it right here with the membership participation and their recipes those people that are their their crafts are here I want people to come meet them and talk to them I want them to come see their art 
I want them to come down and see these new recipes. I want them to come down and buy the cookbook because the, it's going to come right from the members' own families. It's going to be kind of a fun thing to do. If you're looking for the perfect holiday present that your loved ones and friends will enjoy year-round, why not give the gift of a Springs Preserve membership? Help sustain culture, history, and the environment in our community while giving unlimited visits to the preserve's galleries, museums, exhibits, botanical gardens, and walking trails. You can purchase individual, family, and donor-level memberships online or at any preserve ticketing window. For more information, visit springspreserve.org or call 702 822-7700. How about this present for your holiday and New Year dinner guests? Chef Kyle's recipe for a fruity and seasonal package of pork roulade, which is as pretty as it is tasty. Hi guys, how you doing? I'm Chef Kyle from Divine Events at the Springs Preserve, and today we're going to be making a pork tenderloin roulade with a black pepper strawberry sauce and some wild mushroom risotto. So what we have today to prepare everything is we have our dried fruit chutney. So basically any kind of trail mix that you want to get. Today I have stuff that's basically mixed with some peanuts, some almonds, lots of dried cherries, lots of dried cranberries, anything you want. It's up to your discretion. And it helps if you have a food processor at home or any kind of blender because you're looking for this kind of final result, basically almost like a paste. You want it to all stick together so it rolls well into the meat. Uh, salt and pepper, basic ingredients, a little bit of crushed garlic, fresh uh, whole butter, and trussing uh, string, basically to tie everything together so when you sear the meat, everything's going to hold together, it's going to go well nicely. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, you get your tenderloin here, you want to come down with your knife and you want to fillet it right down the middle so you can basically roll it out. As it rolls down like this. I want to get it nice and flat, but I always have my trusty kitchen mallet right here. Now, in this case, if you were going to tenderize beef or something, you'd want to use the spike side right here. But and I'm not using that. I want to pound it flat, so I flip it over and use the flat side. Go to town on it. You don't want to get too crazy. Depends on what day, you, what kind of day you're having, though. Right now, I'm in a good mood, but if I was in a bad mood, it'd be a different story. So you want to get it nice and flat. I think this is what I'm shooting for right here. Nice, easy to work with surface. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my filling, the dried fruit chutney, and you don't want it built up too high, because if it's built up too high and you try to roll it around, as soon as you hit it on the uh, saute pan, the filling's going to seep out, it's not going to hold together, you're left with a big mess. And I don't want to see that happen to you. So basically, get a nice little landing strip area, if you will. Press it down nice and flat. But what I have there, it's good to work with right here. You don't want to have too much. And then you get the, begin the process of rolling it over. Now you want to roll it nice and tight. Tight is the key here. Don't worry about being gentle with it. And once you have that, you take your slip knot from the trussing thread right here. And you make your first tie along one end. And pull it nice and tight so it's all sealed up. And then you proceed to truss the rest of the loin. All right, guys, now we're ready to start the cooking process of our pork tenderloin roulade. As you can see here, lovely season, nice and trussed. So we're going to take some extra virgin olive oil. And again, I can't stress this enough, make sure your pan is really hot. You don't want it to the point where it's smoking, but you definitely want it nice and hot. You can hear it sizzling a little bit now as I add that in there. Take the pan, move it around a little bit. Nice coating. You want to gently lay in your roulade away from you so that oil doesn't splash up. Sit there, you want to get a nice hard sear, let it do its thing. So our risotto, I threw in a little bit of truffle oil, some wild mushrooms, you can use any kind of mushrooms you want. Uh, truffle oil derived from truffles, obviously, which are very, very tough to harvest. In fact, they used to breed special pigs that would go around the countryside of France and Italy, and their job was to sniff out these truffles that grew on uh, tree stumps and uh, different kind of trees. And that's how they would harvest them. Really, really expensive though. So again, basically what you want to do once you get that nice color on it, roll it around. You want that sear all the way around. So that's basically what you're looking for. And then I have some harco vert, which is a fancy French term for green beans. Before I forget that, I almost forgot the minced garlic. That's got to go in there first. Garlic, you just want to brown it. 
Once it gets a little bit of color to it, something like that, throw in your green beans, let those work around. A little flambe working. A little bit of butter. Give that a nice little toss. Turn the heat down just a tad. You're going to take white wine. Any kind of white wine works. I got the box kind, the Franzia. Any kind of table white wine is good. Add that in there. Get that fancy little flambe. Blow that out. Basically what you're going to do with the wine is you're going to let it reduce down. Flip over our lod for that third time, fourth time, excuse me. Then I could fire up my black pepper strawberry sauce. Basically all it is is a strawberry puree mixed in with some fresh black pepper, some fresh basil. And what I wanted to do is bring it up to temperature, reduce it down a little bit so you almost get like a, not really a jelly consistency, but uh, definitely more like along the lines of a syrup. And that's going to be our finishing sauce. The roulade's looking money right now. I think we're good to go. Now with the roulade, you can't finish it in the pan. There's just no way it's not going to cook all the way through. So I got my handy dandy transfer pan right here. Toss that into a 350 degree oven. And you're going to be good to go in about 15 to 20 minutes. Alrighty guys, we are now ready to plate our beautiful pork tenderloin roulade with our dried fruit chutney. First thing you do is take a pair of kitchen shears or regular scissors if you got. And you're going to want to cut the truss off. It gets on there really, really tight. And now we slice. So I usually go about, about an inch thick, half an inch thick, depending on your liking, how many people you're serving is the main thing. And as you can see here, beautiful roulade, the filling in there. We are good to go. I'll do enough for the plate here. Now, I'm going to start off with our beautiful wild mushroom risotto. Lay down a nice little bed of that, right in the center there. Then we'll take our harcovere, or French green beans if you will. Lay some of those down right on top. There we go. And then, what I like to do is I like to fan out the roulade right on the side here. Just kind of all line them up, the usual suspects, if you will, along the side. Uh, this one's staying together here. There's four of them, that's good. And then we're going to finish with our black pepper, strawberry sauce. Go right along the top there. A little avant garde, if you will. There you have it. That is your pork tenderloin roulade with a wild strawberry and black peppercorn sauce. My name is Chef Kyle at Divine Events at the Springs Preserve and hope to see you soon. Thanks again. There's a lot more to discover, so join us next time here at the Springs Preserve where everything winged, wicked, wacky, and wondrous mingles to bring new life to Las Vegas.